I recently saw a video presentation by the other Brian of Edison Pens dealing with nib smoothing and tine adjustment. Good video. Uh, it was very informative, but there was no mention of any ink factor with a nib that does not function as one would like. Do you consider the ink being used before reaching for the loop and smoothing materials for a persnickety nib? So I know Brian Gray, he's a great guy. Him and I have Skyped quite a bit and done some like nib tuning stuff together. Um, he's kind of taught me most of what I know. I took Richard Bender's nib tuning class at the DC show last year. Um, but even before that, Brian Gray and I have been talking about nib tuning and smoothing and stuff like that for a while. So I'm kind of familiar with where he's coming from for his nib tuning stuff. Um, and kind of the blanket statement I think I can say is that um, yes, ink can be a factor in your, your writing experience, certainly. Um, it's mainly a factor with flow, like how wet something is. It's less of a factor with how smooth a nib feels. Now, there, there are some subtleties. You can definitely feel some inks feel a little smoother than others. Um, but mainly, I think a lot of that has to do with some of the lubricants that are in the ink, and then also, if you have a wetter writing ink, you're gonna, you're, you are gonna put less pressure down while you're writing, so the nib will feel a little smoother. So I think there's some of that variance going on that you're kind of adjusting to the ink. Um, so it's not necessarily the ink is making your nib smoother, necessarily. So there's a bit of that going on, but basically, it's kind of like, if you have a car, right, and you want your car to perform a certain way, putting like high test gas instead of the cheap stuff can make a difference. But if you ultimately want your car to really perform differently, you need to adjust the engine or the tuning in the car. You know, you don't say, oh, well, I'm gonna put different gas in it and then my car will be faster or better or whatever. It's like, okay, there will be some difference based on the gas you put in, but really it's gonna matter how the car is tuned and maintained and adjusted, and then what parts might be swapped out and stuff like that. Uh, that's gonna matter a lot more than the type of gas you use. I guess that's a pretty good analogy. I pretty much just came up with that on the fly. So tell me if that's a good analogy or not. So nib, nib guys, pen guys, gals, whoever it is that is working on these things, the ink is a factor, but I think they care a lot less about the ink. They want the tool to work properly and then the ink will provide some variance on top of how, however it's tuned. So basically a lot of the nib folks that I know will kind of just use like one ink or a couple of inks that they're familiar with as a baseline and they kind of tune off of that. So most of the nib folks I know don't really have vast experience testing out all different kinds of inks. They have a lot more experience with pens and then they have a few inks, but you know, when I've talked to like folks like Brian Gray and others, you know, I talk to them about ink and all this kind of stuff, and they're like, oh, I've never used that, I've never used that, I've never used this, you know, because they're they're dealing with pens and tuning all day. They're not testing out 600 different inks, you know what I mean? So um, they, they don't really look at that. They don't come from that lens of, let's use the ink to adjust. I think as users, you know, and I came from a user uh, crowd, you know what I mean? Like I came into this hobby not knowing anything about it. I kind of got into the pen business, really as a novice. And so I've learned right along like you guys do, like you've seen the videos I've put out, very heavy um, user focus, very heavy um, kind of newbie getting into the hobby focus because that's literally what I did. So I wanted to kind of, you know, f you know make a path that followed the way that I went um, so that I could make it easier for anybody else who kind of followed the same path. Um, so for me, the first year that I was in this pen business, I didn't sell any pens. I knew nothing about tuning and all that kind of stuff. Really, it was all about ink and paper for me. So I learned to adjust my writing experience based on ink and paper. And there's definitely some factors you can, you can weigh out there. However, when you get into like nib tuning and adjustment and stuff like that, you find that you can have a much greater influence over the, how a pen writes by doing some tuning stuff. Now there is more specialization that's involved in that. There's more experimentation that's involved, a lot of practice, you're gonna ruin some nibs, you're gonna do some dumb things, and you need to be educated a little bit about how to do it. And you need some special, you know, somewhat specialized tools. You know, you can't just use like wet sandpaper. Um, you need some like micro mesh and stuff like that and a loop and things. So basically when it comes down to somebody like Brian Gray's lens, he's always gonna grab the pen and go to adjust it first. You know, me, where I'm coming from, 
when I speak to somebody, especially if they're newer into the hobby, they don't know anything about ink, so I'll kind of ask like, well, what ink are you using? Oh, you're using this really super dry ink? Maybe you should get a sample of this other wetter ink and see if you like that better, because they're kind of learning the ropes. I wouldn't take somebody that's brand new into the hobby and say, oh, here's a loop, here's micro mesh, you should practice adjusting and then you can have a better writing experience. They're not gonna know what the heck they're doing and they could very well ruin their pen altogether and have a terrible experience and leave the hobby and never come back. So I always come from a lens of, let's go with the things that are safest to change and easiest not to screw up and give somebody kind of the most experience in kind of the writing world in a positive way and then if they're willing and able and want to get into tuning and adjustment and stuff, I will try to provide the tools and education in order to do that with proper disclaimers and all that kind of stuff so that they can then make their experience even better once they've had a couple of different inks and so on. So it is, that is something that I can probably work on a little bit is just like, excuse me, uh, some kind of general troubleshooting type stuff. I've thought about doing a troubleshooting 101 type thing, which is probably a great idea Tell me in the comments, in the chat, or whatever, if you do think it's a good idea um, to do kind of like a troubleshooting fountain pen 101. That probably would be a cool idea. Um, but basically, that's kind of what's going on. So any nib tuner, nib person, pen maker of any kind is always going to come from a lens of let's get the pen tuned and working properly first, and then your ink can kind of vary your experience from there. That's basically where they're coming from. So as long as you understand that, you'll be in a good place.